Hey everyone, it's Monday, so we're back in the book of Exodus. We're going to read chapter 7, 8, and 9 on day 50. So welcome to Bible in 365, and I'm again glad you're joining me. Um, today we're going to read about um, what God is going to do in the land of Egypt to get Pharaoh to let his people go. Remember that they have been basically held hostage and held as slaves for all these years, and um, and God is sending Moses and his brother Aaron to tell Pharaoh to let the people go. So let's go ahead and jump in, and we'll start in, um, in Moses, in Exodus chapter 7. Okay, so the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you as God to Pharaoh, and Aaron, your brother, shall be your prophet. You shall speak all that I command you, and Aaron, your brother, shall tell Pharaoh to send the children of Israel out of his land. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. Now, I just want to um, to explain something here. It says that God says that I will harden Pharaoh's heart. Well, you know, Pharaoh's heart was already hardened. But um, when he says I'll harden Pharaoh's heart, how he does that is the very next part of what he says. I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. That's how Pharaoh's heart is being hardened because Pharaoh's heart is full of pride. And, you know, when God is sending his signs and wonders in the land, rather than being in awe of God and in being in, um, you know, knowing that God truly is the God of heaven and earth, rather than responding positively, Pharaoh responds negatively. His heart becomes more and more hardened. So, you know, God's not hardening his heart like as an evil intent um, because there's nothing evil in God. But by the signs and wonders that he does, that's how Pharaoh's heart is being hardened. I hope that makes sense. Um, okay, so verse 4. But Pharaoh will not heed you so that I might lay my hand on Egypt and bring my armies and my people the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. And the Egyptians and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch my hand on Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. The Moses and Aaron did so, just as the Lord commanded them, so they did. And Moses was 80 years old and Aaron was 83 years old when they spoke to Pharaoh. I love that. You are never too old. You're never too young for God to use you. Moses was 80 years old when he was just stepping into the true calling that God had for his life, and Aaron was 83 years old. So don't ever think that age is preventing you from fulfilling God's will for your life. Um, I just love that they make it a point to tell you how old they how old they were at this point in time. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh speaks to you, saying, Show a miracle for yourself, then you shall say to Aaron, Take your rod and cast it before Pharaoh and let it become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh and they did so, just as the Lord commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. But Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, so the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For every man threw down his rod and they became serpents. But Aaron's rods swallowed up their rods, and Pharaoh's heart grew hard, and he did not heed them. So each time you see that another miracle of God takes place in front of Pharaoh, his heart grows hardened because he is, again, just full of pride and um, self selfishness, I guess. Um, as the Lord, okay, so the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hard. He refuses to let my people go. And I have written in here, that's his choice. That's Pharaoh's choice. Go to Pharaoh in the morning when he goes out to the water. You shall stand by the river's bank to meet him. And the rod which was turned into a serpent, you shall take in your hand. And you shall say to him, the Lord God of the Hebrews has sent me to you saying, let my people go that they may serve me in the wilderness. So when he talks about letting his people go, he's telling them what the purpose is. He wants them to serve him in the wilderness. But indeed, until now, you will not hear. Thus says the Lord, by this you shall know that I am the Lord. 
Behold, I will strike the waters which are in the river with the rod that is in my hand, and they shall be turned into blood. And the fish that are in the river shall die, the river shall stink, and the Egyptians will loathe to drink the water of the river. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Say to Aaron, Take your rod and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over their streams, over their rivers, over their ponds, over all their pools of water, that they may become blood. And there shall be blood throughout all the land, all the land of Egypt, both in buckets of wood and pitchers of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so, just as the Lord commanded. So he lifted up the rod and struck the waters that were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh, and in the sight of his servants, and all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. The fish that were in the river died, the river stank, and the Egyptians could not drink the water of the river, so there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. Then the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments, and Pharaoh's heart, heart grew hard, and he did not heed them, as the Lord had said. And Pharaoh neither went into his house, oh sorry, and Pharaoh turned and went into his house, neither was his heart moved by this. So that's a pretty amazing thing when your whole um, country turns, the water in your country turns to blood and Pharaoh just turned around, walked in his house and his heart wasn't even moved by that. So all the Egyptians, so all his people now, all the Egyptians are suffering because of this and Pharaoh isn't caring for his people at all. He's again, full of pride. So all the Egyptians dug all around the river for water to drink because they could not drink the water of the river. And seven days passed after the Lord had struck the river. So chapter eight. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, go to Pharaoh and say to him, thus says the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me. But if you refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all your territory with frogs. So the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly which shall go up and come into your house, into your bedroom, on your bed, into the houses of your servants, on your people, into your ovens, and into your kneading bowls. And the frogs shall come up on you, on your people, and all your servants. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your hand with your rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up on the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up the frogs on the land of Egypt. And I didn't under, quite understand that, that thinking because you have frogs, and now the magicians are going to bring even more frogs. And the same with the thing before with the um, turning the water to blood. It said that their magicians did so with their enchantments. So why would you make a bad situation worse? But that's what they did. The magicians did so, and they brought up even more frogs in the land of Egypt. So then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let, my, and let the people go that they may sacrifice to the Lord. Okay, this is going to be lie number one. So it's the first time that Pharaoh is lying. Okay, so he's saying, we're going to let your people go. And Moses said to Pharaoh, accept the honor of saying, this is interesting, accept the honor of saying when I will shall intercede for you, for your servants and for your people, to destroy the frogs from you and your houses, that they may, uh, that they remain in the river only. So he's saying, when do you want me to pray to God for him to take away these frogs? Now remember, they're all over the place. They're even in their kneading bowls, their food bowls. And so Pharaoh says, tomorrow. <laughs> so I have written by the word tomorrow, what, W-H-A-T with exclamation point and question mark, like, what are you talking about? You know, don't, don't do it right now. We'll live with them for another few hours and overnight, and you can pray tomorrow for them to, them to be taken away. Okay, so I said tomorrow. And he said, let it be according to your word that you may know that there is none, no one like the Lord our God. And the frogs shall depart from you, from your houses, from your servants, and from your people, and they shall remain in the river only. Then Moses and Aaron went out to Pharaoh, out, I'm sorry, went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried to the Lord concerning the frogs, which he had brought out against Pharaoh. So the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and the frogs died out of the houses, out of the courtyards, and out of the fields. 
They gathered them together in heaps, and the land stank. I bet it did. But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart, and he did not heed them, as the Lord had said. So, you know, isn't I have to say I'm guilty of that sometimes, too. You know, you pray for something, and as soon as you start to get an answer to it or get some relief, you don't really pray as much or, you know, you don't keep that relationship with the Lord close. Um, but anyway, what Pharaoh was doing was just out and out lying. So he saw there was relief. He hardened his heart and did not heed them as the Lord had said. So the Lord said to Moses, say to Aaron, stretch out your rod and strike the dust of the land that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so for Aaron struck out, stretched out his hand with his rod and struck the dust of the earth and it became lice on men and beast. And all the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. I don't know if you've ever had to deal with lice before, but they're tiny and they're awful. So now the Egyptian, now the magicians so worked their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there were lice on man and beast. Then the magician said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. So now they're starting to see that they that God is just way more powerful than they are. And he's saying, this is the finger of God. Now the finger of God, a finger, just a little bit. And, you know, he's doing just this, lice, frogs, um, water to blood. You know, God, God is powerful. Uh, he's saying, this is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart grew hard and he did not heed them, just as the Lord had said. And the Lord said to Moses, Rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh as he comes out to the water. Then say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Or else, if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies on you and your servants, on your people, and into your houses. The houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies, and also the ground on which they stand. And in that day I will set apart the land of Goshen in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies will be there in order that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the land. I will make a difference between my people and your people. Tomorrow this, this sign shall be. And the Lord did so. Thick swarms of flies came into the house of Pharaoh, into his servants' houses, and into all the land of Egypt. And the land was corrupted because of the swarms of flies. And Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Go sacrifice your go sacrifice to your God in the land. So that was it's going to be the second lie, but notice that he said, um, "Go sacrifice to your God in the land." So he's saying you can sacrifice to your God, but you need to do so in Egypt. And remember, God is um, wanting them to go into the wilderness to sacrifice to them. And Moses said, "It is not right to do so, for we would be sacrificing the abomination of the Egyptians." to the Lord our God. If we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, they will st um, then will they not stone us? So he's kind of repeating that same thing. I just, we can't sacrifice here where we need to go into the wilderness. We will go three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God as he, uh, uh, um, as he will command us. So Pharaoh said, I will let you go that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only you shall not go very far. Intercede for me. Then Moses said, Indeed, I am going out from you, and I will entreat the Lord that the swarms of flies may depart tomorrow from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. But let Pharaoh not deal deceitfully. Don't lie to me anymore. Let Pharaoh not deal deceitfully anymore in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. So Moses went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses. He removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from the people. Not one remained, but Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also. Neither would he let the people go. Chapter 9. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh and tell him, Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. I haven't counted, but I wonder how many times the Lord has said this exact thing. Let my people go, that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let them go and still hold on to them, behold, the hand of the Lord will be on your cattle in the field, on the horses, on the donkeys, on the camels, on the oxen, and on the sheep, a very severe pestilence. 
and the Lord will make a difference between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt, and nothing shall die of that that belongs to the children of Israel. Then the Lord appointed a set time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord will do this thing in the land. So the Lord did this thing on the next day, and all the livestock of Egypt died, but the livestock of the children of Israel, not one, died. Then Pharaoh sent, and indeed, not one of the livestock of the Israelites was dead, but, on the, but the heart of Pharaoh became hard, and he did not let the people go. So the Lord said to Moses and to Aaron, Take for yourselves hands full, a handfuls of ashes from a furnace, and let Moses scatter it toward the heavens in the sight of Pharaoh. And it will become fine dust in all the land of Egypt, and it will cause boils that break out in sores on man and beast throughout all the land of Egypt. Then they took ashes from the furnace and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses scattered them toward the heaven. And they caused boils that break out in sores on man and beast. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils, for the boils were on the magicians and on the Egyptians. See, when cruelty, when evil rules, it affects all the people that it rule, he rules over. And the Lord, but the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he did not heed them, just as the Lord had spoken to Moses. Then the Lord said, said to Moses, Rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh, Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For at this time I will send all my plagues into your very heart, and on your servants and on your people, that you may know that there is none like me in all the earth. Now if I had stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence, then you would have been cut off from the earth. But indeed, for this purpose I have raised you up, that I may show my power in you, and that my name may be declared in all the earth. Yet, as yet, you exalt yourself. We talked about Pharaoh's pride. This is what, he, and this is what the Lord is telling him. You exalt yourself against my people, in that you will not let them go. Behold, tomorrow about this time I will cause a very heavy hail to rain down, such as not been in Egypt since its founding until now. Therefore, send now and gather your livestock and all that you have in the field, for the hail shall come down on every man and every animal which is found in the field, and is not brought home, and they shall die. So he's giving them an opportunity to listen to them and not lose their servants and their livestock. He's saying the ones that are left in the field will be um, will die, but the ones that are brought in won't. So it says in verse 20, He who feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his livestock flee to the houses. So these people have an opportunity to have a choice. And so even among the servants of Pharaoh, there were some that now feared the Lord. So they listened to what he said. Um, the ones that feared the Lord made their servants and the livestock go into the houses. But he who did not regard the word of the Lord left his servants and his livestock in the field. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward the heaven that there may be hail in all the land of Egypt, one man, one beast, one every herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses stretched out his rod toward the heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail and fire darted to the ground, and the Lord rained hail on all the land of Egypt. So, you know, I also want to say that this is the reason we need to be obedient to the Lord, because if you notice that Moses and Aaron were using the rod to as an instrument um, of helping, if you will, helping God have these miracles happen, because each time the Lord is saying to either uh, Moses or Aaron, stretch out your rod and do this, stretch out your rod and do that. And it's not until they acted in faith and stretched out their rod that the event actually happened. And so, you know, if the Lord tells you to do something, you know, he's looking to provide a miracle in your life and somebody's life, but we're like co-laborers with him. And oftentimes we have to do something. It's not just a miracle that just happens. And I do believe that does happen from time to time. Um, but, you know, more often than not, I believe that there's something that God wants us to do. And in our doing in faith, stepping out in faith, that's where the miracle comes. So um, we're going to see that, you know, he's going to use the actions of Moses and Aaron to uh, continue to perform his miracles. 
Okay, so there was hail and fire. Um, oh, okay. So there was hail and fire mingled with the hail, so very heavy that there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. And the hail struck throughout all, the whole land of Egypt, and that was in the field, both man, sorry, both man and beast, and hail struck every herb of the field and broke down the tree in the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, was there no hail. And Pharaoh sent and called for Moses and Aaron and said to them, I have sinned this time. The Lord is righteous and my people and I are wicked. So it's sounding like he's, his heart is starting to turn. But listen, entreat the Lord that there be no more thundering and hail, for it is enough. I will let you go and you shall stay no longer. So Moses said to him, as soon as I've gone out of the city, so now he's saying, okay, I'm going to leave first this time before I command the hail to stop. As soon as I've gone out of the city, I will spread out my hands to the Lord. The thunder will cease and there will be no more hail that you may know that the earth is the Lord's. But as for you and your servants, I know that you will not yet fear the Lord God. So he's understanding that his, he, his heart really hasn't turned. Now the flax and the barley were struck, for the barley was in the head and the flax was in the bud, but the wheat and the spelt were not struck, for they are late crops. So Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh and spread out his hands to the Lord, and thunder, the thunder and the hail ceased, and the rain was not poured on the earth. And when Pharaoh saw that the rain, the hail, and the thunder had ceased, he sinned yet more. He hardened his heart, he and his servants. So this is a third lie. So the heart of Pharaoh was hard, neither would he let the children of Israel go, as the Lord has as the Lord had spoken by Moses. Chapter 10. Now the Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the hearts of his servants, that I may show these signs of mine before him. So it's basically the same thing we started out with. His heart's hardened because of his own pride. And as the Lord is showing, demonstrating all these signs and wonders, it's just making uh, Pharaoh more and more angry rather than him being humble and receiving or understanding that God is a great God. Okay. Um, these signs of mine before him that you may tell in the hearing of your son and your son's son, the mighty things I have done in Egypt and my signs in which I have done among them, that you may know that I am the Lord. So Moses and Aaron came into Pharaoh and said to him, Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Again, what we've been talking about, pride and then humility. Humble, we need to humble ourselves before the Lord and he will lift us up. That's the scripture. We humble ourselves before him and he lifts us up. How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go that they may serve me. Or else if you refuse to let my people refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow I will bring locusts into your territory. Let me just make sure I'm reading. Yep. Oh, seven through nine. Oh, we were supposed to stop there. Okay, that was the end of oh, I was reading on to I was so excited about the story. I was reading and starting to read chapter 10. So anyway, well, we'll start with chapter 10 tomorrow. You got a little hint of what it's going to be like um, in the beginning of that chapter. So, um, okay, well, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great evening. Love you guys.